If somebody wants to be your friend, what should they do? Um, I guess I kind of don't really give people a choice. I just make friends with people. If I see someone I like or want to um, make friends with them, I just go up to them and talk to them. Since Miller Syndrome affects the shape of your hands, what is your favorite way to greet somebody? Definitely a hug. Has to be a hug. I, handshakes, no, no. Um, I know I understand some people don't like hugs, but I always ask, well, except for you when you walked in the door, sorry, I just bear hugged you and that was it. I feel like I, I give like really great hugs and I just hug everyone I can because I'm like, come on, have a hug. You know, it might make you feel better. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, I just, yeah, I think it's important for people to respect each other. Welcome to SBSK. We believe that everybody has a story that's worthy of being heard. When we listen to one another, the world becomes a closer place, and we all benefit together. So without hesitation, let's meet today's friend. Oh, this is so fun. I'm so pleased you've come. I'm, I'm happy I'm here too. <laughs> all right, here we go. There's going to be at least hundreds of thousands of people who see this, potentially millions. Yes. What do you want them all to know? Uh, I want them to know to not be afraid to go out and follow your dreams and do whatever you want to do. If you hold yourself back from doing what you want to do, you're not really living a life. You need to live life and do what you want because who knows what's going to happen around the corner. So just go out there and grab the bull by the horns and achieve your dreams. Does Miller Syndrome affect your life expectancy? I don't know, but I guess uh, the doctors don't know either, and they were like, well, we don't really know what your life expectancy is, so I pretty much live every day as if it might be my last day. I know it probably sounds a little bit morbid, but I actually have a lot more fun that way. If I want to learn to ski, I learn to ski. I want to learn to ice skate, I ice skate. I do rock climbing. At the end of the day, if anything happens to me, I'm doing what I want to do and I'm having an adventure and I'm not wrapping myself up in cotton wool and saying, okay, if I just sit on this couch all day and don't move a muscle, then I'll live longer. Because that's not really living your life. So I like to go out and live my life and go, okay, well, if something happens to me while, I, while I'm skiing or while I'm ice skating, well, at least I'm out there doing it. What advice would you have for somebody who's struggling to love themselves? Well, you've really got to come to it yourself. No one can really tell you and sit there and go, okay, Chris, you need to love yourself. Does that make you love yourself even anymore? No. No. So no one can tell you to love yourself anymore. You have to be able to come to it yourself. Fine. Find something in life that makes you happy and then that'll, if you find lots of things that make you happy, then that takes away your negative thoughts. Maybe I've cried for half an hour um, and I feel like life is ending and I'm, I'm so different to everyone else and I have my little half an hour pity party and then I'm like, well, you know what, I've achieved this and I've achieved that. And, it's not the end of the world. Let's just go out and have some ice cream or chocolate and that'll make everything better and then, yeah, carry on with life. Do you get offended when people stare? No. Yeah. That's just learning. Um, adults do kind of know better, but even then they're still learning because they probably haven't seen anyone who looks like me, so... Yeah, it is what it is. People are going to stare and you can't really stop that. I mean, I stare at people. It's hard not to look at someone and think, oh, they look interesting or oh they look different or and, and I know I'm different but it's hard not to just wonder about a person and what what they've got going on in their life or or you know how they got to be that way or wanting to know their story so there's nothing wrong with wanting to know someone's story even if you're an adult and you know I guess you might find the same when you go and interview people you just want to find out about what 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 the, what this story is? I just try to get on with everybody, and I basically want to live a life that's um, normal. Quotations. Will you always be open to someone coming up and saying hi, or are there times where you prefer a little bit of solitude? 
I pretty much like it when people come up to me whenever they want. Um, I guess I've had a lot of solitude in my life, um, being the way I am with my disability and people are more afraid to come up and talk to me. So um, they, yeah, so if people come up, I'm open to it. And if I don't want company, I can just go home and cuddle my cat anyway. What is your diagnosis and how does it affect you? I have Miller syndrome, so it basically means that my arms and my hands and my feet and my eyes weren't formed properly when I was born. It's not very well known. Uh, I've always been told that there is like no more than 40 people worldwide that's documented. Do you see your syndrome as something you have to overcome or is it an integral part of your identity? I think it's just a part of who I am. I don't think I would be who I am today without having my syndrome. I don't know who I would be without it. With it, I know I'm a kind, caring, compassionate person who is really passionate about everybody being treated the same and being treated nice and kind and with respect. I need some advice from you. Okay. You're, I'll try. <laughs> that's all we can do. You're in your mid 30s. I just turned 30. How do I adjust to being in my 30s now? It's a whole different mentality. No, it's not. You don't think so? You're as young as you feel. So, age doesn't really matter. If you feel like you're still 28, then just act normal, like you've acted your whole life. Don't change just because your age has changed. Can I tell people I'm 28? No, that's lying. If you had one wish, what would it be? <sighs> one wish? I guess for the world to be a happy and peaceful place, um, no judgments, no bullying. If everyone respected each other, there would be no, I don't think there would be is the wars that there are in the world. Why do you think we struggle to respect one another? I think because we all have our own stubborn natures and everyone, some people want to be just right all the time and are not willing to compromise. And I know I have that problem too sometimes, like sometimes I struggle. I don't really know if I've answered your question, I go off on a tangent. Do you have a tendency to go off on a tangent? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. There's just so much I need to tell people and I, I want people to know. And so sometimes I like just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I, I have not <laughs> once considered anything you said to be on a tangent. It's all interesting. Okay, that's good. What are you most proud of in your life? I ran a half marathon. How was that? It was hard work, but I did it. And that's all that matters. I did it. And I did it in the four hours that I wanted to do it in. And I don't care if I was last, which I was, but I don't care uh, because I was out there doing it. And I think I really, really feel like I'm like the first person with my syndrome to run such a long distance. And I'm so proud of that. I didn't realize I could cry so much <laughs> when I got to the end. It was emotional. But it was great. Why did you cry? I think just uh, the achievement, the fact that I managed to achieve it was just so overwhelming for me because I didn't 100% know if I could achieve it. Like I went out there going, I'm going to do it. I can do it. I'm, you know, I'm going to get there. But when I got to the end, I was like, oh, can I stop running now? I was just, I felt like I was always running for my life just to make sure I could do it. And so, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was fine. You got to have a cry every now and then. It's okay to cry. Sometimes I felt like, you know, I've been excluded from things because people think I can't do something. Um, but I want to be able to show people that I can do something if before they've said that I can't do it. I want them to know that I can do it instead of them just looking at me and saying, oh, you look different, your arms are too short. Well, you won't be able to do that. And so when they do that, that kind of makes you it makes you feel like you're a lot less able to do stuff. Just because I have a disability and I look different doesn't mean I can't build up my muscles, tone myself, be healthy, look good. I can dress myself to look good. I might look different on the outside, but I can still make myself feel good. Do you want people to ignore your differences? Yes and no. Is that allowed to... <laughs> I don't want them... They, they, I guess because it's so obvious that I'm different, that they can't help but see that. But I don't want people to see that first. I want people to 
see what's inside and see my bubbly personality and see what see what I've got to offer before they make judgment on what I look like first. The insides are the same, like the heart is the same, the the you know, all my organs and my, my bones are, are all the same, you know, it is just because I look different on the physically outside doesn't mean that my inside is different as well. Thanks for watching SBSK. Click subscribe here to be part of our community. Then hit the notification bell below so you never miss a story. You can even meet another friend here. See you next time.